Albert Einstein once stated, I am enough of an artist to draw freely upon my, ma my imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. This brilliant visionary understood that knowledge in itself is inadequate without the artistic ability to envision and create a better world. Unfortunately, today, humanity is struggling in an era of greed and endless war. And as a result of this warped value system, music and the arts are cast the wayside when they should be embraced the most. See, artistic expression is not just an important aspect of social change. It's fundamental for change to happen. Well, one organization has cultivated this idea as part of its mission. It's called the Zeitgeist Movement, an association of the socially conscious who are striving for a more peaceful world through art. It's a subject that will be explored at the annual Zeitgeist Media Festival this Sunday in Los Angeles. So here to talk about this upcoming event and how to bridge art and activism, I'm joined now by the founder of the Zeitgeist Movement, Peter Joseph. What is going on, Peter? Hey, Abby, thank you so much for having me on. Of course. So, Peter, 95% uh, of public school children in the U.S. have felt the cuts to education, and usually the first thing that gets cut from the school curriculum is music and art. Why do you think these arenas are the first to go, and what does taking them away do to a child development? Yeah, I think it's a lack of really poor research on one side. And then on the other side, I have this kind of whimsical suspicion that the powers that be... <laughs> kind of are afraid of the artists of the world or kind of afraid of the experimenters that have come forward. And as you so eloquently pointed out in this introduction, uh, the greatest thinkers and scientists and engineers and, and those that have engaged progress have not come from the rigid establishment of academia. They have been outside of the box almost universally. So, you know, it's, it's sad to see those cuts. And I was speaking for myself, I was very fortunate to attend an arts university for quite a long period. I kind of pull that in for my value system. I encourage anyone that I meet to go into the arts to some effect. Point being is that in the world today, especially on the social level, there is a tremendous loss of creativity. The great failure, one of the great failures, is that no one's thinking broad enough, especially on the social level. And the Zeitgeist Movement this is one of our flagship projects. We have another intellectual day called Z Day or Zeitgeist Day. But every August on the 4th, uh, well, usually the first week of August, this year it's on the 4th in Hollywood, a place called Avalon, we do a day-long festival that features not only great artists, but also great engineers and thinkers. We will discuss things from sustainable housing to uh, evacuated tube transport, maglev trains and presentations, of course, intermixing that with really well thought out and executed expressions of socially conscious art as well. So I encourage, of course, anyone to come down if you're around in Los Angeles on August. And I want to thank you, of course, for participating as you are. Yes, I'm excited to be a part of it, uh, Peter. I'm excited to meet you. Uh, you know, you've said that experimentation and artistic interests appear to be torn out of people in their early development. I mean, you just mentioned that we're kind of conditioned into not pursuing the arts. Uh, talk about what respect this is happening and why. Yeah. I think that, again, there's a rigid uniformity to thought that is very beneficial to the existing establishments. And if you can condition people to think a certain way in a certain process, all the way up to their PhD curriculum, then they will most likely, on average, especially if you speak with people like this, they will often support the existing establishment. It's a, I hate to use the word brainwashing, but there's a indoctrination that's inherent to the educational system and the way that it's constructed because it's based on pre-existing ideas and pre-existing uh, identifications. The beauty of the arts and experimentation, the beauty of, of going outside of your thought press, process of, for example, Arthur C. Clarke, a great sci-fi writer who also, by the way, invented satellite communication, uh, he had a great quote in one of his laws that basically stated that in order to in order for science to progress, you have to go beyond everything that is perceived as rational to a certain extent. And he was called a mooniac and a lunatic back then because, of course, you know, he was saying, well, we could probably go to the moon. Everyone said, oh, you're crazy. And unfortunately, that's the same type of hype and disposition that we see pushing people back today. And in the movement, we talk about things that relate to social development, advanced systems to apply to solve poverty, to do lots of problem resolution, to get us off the slave labor job cycle, nine to five element that has been very, very oppressive, in fact, is the new form of slavery for the 21st century, 20th century as well. And these ideas are shut down the exact same way. So there's a desperate need, I'll say it again, for new creativity in the world. 
And uh, I, I really believe that, it, just as that Einstein quote points out, we have to kind of shake what we've been taught to a certain effect and start to look at possibilities and ask questions and not feel put down when people say, you know, that you can't do that or that's irrational. We have to push beyond that because every, again, every great thinker, every great inventor, every great person that has initiated social progress has come from an experimental process, which is intrinsically a part of a developmental process. Right. The scientific concept, I'm sorry, go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say, right. I mean, of course, if we always revert back to what's known, what's already been explained, Lord, we're never going to progress. We're never going to move forward um, on hum uh, you know, in humanity's collective consciousness. But what about the personal level? Let's talk about the role of art in a utilitarian mm. fashion to, to serve the individual. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, I, I look at that a few different ways. I mean, personal development is always a part of social development and how we, how we develop our minds and we gain dexterity both mentally. I, I'm a musician, so I, I engage in this meditation constantly. I find it very beneficial personally to keep my head clear and everything else. So I think that's a very important issue. On the next larger tier, there's the catharsis element, which I think is interesting because if you go back to the 1960s, and in a lot of ways this festival on, on Sunday is reminiscent of that, even though it's a little more targeted. The protest movements that happened, which were full of art, full of expression, full of music, songs about revolution and the like and change and positivity that served as an amazing catharsis for people in many ways where they would go to these events they'd hear these things and they could they could breathe they could have a release a pressure valve release which again is very very needed in our society uh, to jump a little bit into more less abstract terms when we look at global terrorism and its real definition this is blowback from an oppressive empire and oppressive circumstances that have limited resources across the world so this pressure valve is going to hit one way or another and I I think it's great that the arts have served that role. But on another level, I think it's inspiration that's needed. So when I listen to great artists throughout time, and I look at my own experience, and I look at the great engineers again that have been thinking and writing and philosoph philosophically denoting certain premises of society in an experimental notion, I'm inspired. And I want to move forward with new ideas. And that's part of the issue of this festival, too. And again, I, I recommend, I, pr I prefer, I should say, the inspiration element to the cathartic element, because while the cathartic element is, is needed, Needed. It's not enough just to get out there and, and release. We want to focus people in a specific way. And again, that goes back to the general, the general foundation of the Zeitgeist Movement's work. I agree. Art is definitely fundamental on any sort of progress, any sort of social change. Uh, I think Ron Paul even said, you know, revolution would never happen in, in, unless music and art were involved. I couldn't agree more. You know, but Peter, I feel like I meet people all the time who tell me that they wish that they were artistic. It seems like they've been conditioned into thinking that they aren't, but they've never really explored how to express themselves in really this way. I mean, how do we break this mindset? Good point. It's, it's an educational prerogative by all means. I, I, uh, I, I'm very non-establishment when it comes to the process of education, the entire foundation of rote learning. It basically kind of, I mean, if, you, if anyone that has children knows how deeply experimental they are, how, how the natural curiosity that's built into us is for our survival and exploration, uh, it's, it's there. But something happens to us as we move forward through time, and it's, as you pointed out earlier, it's kind of pulled out of us. And a massive educational reform needs to be done to get people to learn how to think and explore and feel confident in asking questions, as opposed to the rigid academia institution we have now, which again is rote processing. You're banished and looked down upon if you don't get grade systems the, the right way, if, you're, if you attempt to question certain foundational issues. In a way, it mirrors pretty much exactly the political philosophy that eventually people migrate into as they get older, and they're locked back into that frame of reference in, in the same way. Um, Peter, so I it's hate an to we have uh, about a minute left. Talk about okay. this weekend's event and how it fits into the broader zeitgeist. Movement. Uh, sure. Well, the movement, uh, as I pointed out earlier, is about broad social change, and we want to engage the public as an educational movement to get information out there and to inspire and to show that the world can change. It's just a matter of humanity coming together to make that collective decision and moving forward, as hard as it may seem. But this Sunday, if anyone is in Los Angeles, uh, we have a multimedia arts festival, as stated, that is completely socially conscious nonprofit. We've had about 15 to 20 nonprofits associated with it. It's a completely open festival with a multimedia, eight-hour multimedia expression from painters like Mir One, very well-known muralist, to K.B. Solomon, a brilliant social activist opera singer, to Hyra Sonic, to Christina Tobin, who, of course, is a part of Free and Equal Elections. So we will be discussing both awesome. gov governmental reform and, and many other issues along with this celebration, which is what life should be. It all fits together. Thank you so much. Peter Joseph, founder of the Zeitgeist Movement. Thank you.